Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you a PvP 10.1.5 solo shuffle tier list update. There was a lot of changes to a lot of classes, and I think it's important that we start talking about the implications of those changes so we can look and see how each specialization is excelling. By the end of this video, you're going to have a great idea of which specializations are going to be best suited for you to succeed and dominate. So let's get started. We've got the Affliction War. Warlock. Now, we did see a significant buff to haunt damage in this patch. I have still yet to see any Affliction Warlock um, picking this talent up just yet. It brings a tremendous amount of damage. If you can get lobbies where you can stay alive, you can carry, but you're really at the mercy of your team to be able to survive, and that can be really tough, especially with the potency of a lot of high mobility classes, which can get all over you, and it can get really gross really fast. So for me, in the hands of a skilled player, you're definitely going to be able to make this specialization work, but for for a newcomer, I would definitely not recommend it. For me at the moment, I think that it's sitting around a B plus because it does have that strong carry potential in the hands of a skilled player, um, but you can get some lobbies and with how good a lot of other specializations are that can basically counter you, I think it's gonna be a little bit tougher than it is easier. Arcane Mage. Now this is a specialization that has come out of nowhere, but I really shouldn't say it's out of nowhere with the significant damage buffs that it's gotten. It is absolutely killing it. This specialization is now a monster. The Arcane Dream is the Arcane Reality. And I am doing something, you know, pretty monumentous. I am putting Arcane Mage on S tier for Solo Shuffle. Although I do, I would say that it's one of the more complicated specializations. If you've never played it before, it's not going to be one that you immediately start to succeed on. But with the amount of potential that you can do on this and the players that I've seen that have developed their time on Arcane, it's definitely paying off for them. It's definitely a powerful spec, topping the damage meter in wizard lobbies, carrying games, absolutely insane class, can kite melee for days. Definitely a strong contender at the moment. Arms Warrior. This is a specialization that is also a lot more powerful now in 10.1.5. Prior to this patch, I would have said that it's C tier, pretty low, maybe B tier, pretty average, honestly. But now with its consistent damage output, it's definitely a powerhouse. For me, I'm feeling it's probably somewhere in between A or A+. Plus. Uh, at the moment, we'll leave it at A, but by the end of the video, I'll go through and readjust these depending on how I feel based on the other specializations as we go. But right now, I think it's definitely in the A tier position. Assassination Rogue. <clears throat> For me, I'm throwing this one, it's at the C tier. I, I, it's a little bit below the kind of like poverty line for being able to make a specialization work. I think it's gonna be really tough. Um, rogue specs in general in Solo Shuffle can be frustrating when other classes stun and mess up your DRs. Damage is just not there. You, you're doing, you need to be doing way more damage than what you're currently doing, I think, to be um, very viable. And that's that's the main thing holding you back. Augmentation Evoker, even despite the nerfs, I think the specialization is still powerful. I've seen a few of them popping up. It seems to be extremely potent into melee DPS. I think this is likely blistering scales, thorns effects into melee, and with how tanky and its mobility, it's tough for melee to stick onto it. I think that Augmentation Evoker is probably, I want to say, an A+, plus because you can get some scenarios, wizard lobbies, that, that can kind of hold you back from succeeding. It's still really tanky, still really tough to take down uh, anybody on the team. It's definitely still slowing down the game, even despite the healing reductions to it. It's still really powerful, but I would not say that it's like god tier like it used to be. Beast Mastery Hunter, this one's not doing as well as I had expected. I thought with the 15% damage to Cobra, Barbed, and Killshot, that was going to be doing well. It did say in the notes that they reverted the 10% barb shot change, but I'm wondering if they reverted all of the hunter changes um, because it's just it's not it's not gotten the punch that I was expecting it to get. Um, for me, Beast Mastery Hunter is probably coming close to the to the Affliction Warlock. I think it's a great just pick up spec and play if you've never played Solo Shuffle or PvP in general. It's a really good spec, but in terms of overall comp like competition and what you can do with it, I think you're going to start to struggle a bit, and it's mostly because of its damage. Now it is great into mages. You you will feel very powerful into mages, um, but but there's a lot of other things in the game than just mages. So that's likely skewing it. If you get lobbies with mages, you'll do well. And if you don't, it's going to be a, a rough ride for you. And its damage is definitely lower than I was honestly expecting it to be for this patch. Uh, Demonology Warlock. I think this is still a strong specialization. I'm debating whether A plus or A at the moment. I think I'm going to go with A. Uh, I think there's a lot of high mobility melee at the moment that can kind of run you down and make it difficult um, in order to get pressure out. Um, although in Solo Shuffle, you are even maybe more strong because people don't respect Tyrant. They don't CC it. They don't deal with your Fell Obelisk. Uh, and you kind of get away with stuff that you normally wouldn't get away with in other brackets. So I think that with how much crowd control it has and its ability to just end the game with Tyrant is definitely still uh, a strong contender. Destruction warlock even despite the portal buffs i feel like it's still pretty easy to take down the specialization it's not like the top wizard 
um, by any means. I don't think that it's as weak as Affliction. I think it's probably slightly better. I'm, th I'm throwing it on the A tier for now for Solo Shuffle. I think it's a l maybe a little bit better. Maybe they're about equal. It's pretty close. Um, again, B plus to A is, is definitely a, a closer line than like B to A, for example. Devastation Evoker. This guy is doing a lot better. Um, you are doing a lot of damage now. I'm seeing a lot more damage. You definitely bumped up at least slightly. I'd, I'd feel comfortable putting you on kind of like the B plus tier um, for now. Um, you're definitely a lot better than you were to take that into account. Discipline Priest, still running out of mana, probably second to least fast. That's not the right language, but Resto Druid is pretty much the only Druid that maybe... Resto Druid is the only healer that can run out of mana faster than you, really. Um, you've got decent damage. Um, I, I did really well on it, and there's a lot of Discipline Priests doing really well on it, so it, it feels weird for me to give it a low ranking, but I want to give it a slightly low ranking. Um, I, I think like a B plus is probably a safe spot to be putting in terms of overall competition. Ellie Shaman, you guys are doing remarkable damage, although the changes to control the lava for Flame Shock Dispel are not noticeable. Uh, healers will still spam Dispel your, your Flame Shocks. I think that it's still a strong spec. I think there's a reason that we see so many of it in the Solo Shuffle representation. It's just a really strong spec, and, and you can definitely climb with it and have a lot of success. Enhancement Shaman, Doom Winds build, still really powerful, still really potent, absolutely running people down. Um, definitely a strong contender uh, in Solo Shuffle for that reason. Uh, you've got decent hybrid utility and survivability, so definitely a powerful spec that's worth considering here uh, for Solo Shuffle. Feral Druid, uh, now the High Winds nerf hit Feral Druids as well as Balance and Resto, so the Spam Clone build is a little weaker, but I think that Feral is still definitely a good pick. It brings a good, well-balanced kit of damage, Mortal Wounds, um, and Cyclone, and support. I think that it's still really reasonably well-balanced for Solo Shuffle, and you'll have a good run with it. Fire Mage, I think this guy is really good uh, at the moment. Fire Mages are a lot tankier recently. I think it's likely because there's a lot more melee DPS between warriors and windwalkers and there's also a lot more paladins which a mage with a paladin against melee is pushed borderline immortal um so that's probably the, the case for it so i'm giving a uh, fire mage a little bit of a higher ranking i think it's probably like an a plus type of situation um based on what i have seen so far uh, you know priest meta paladin meta fire mage is going to be doing really good um unlike kind of like a resto druid meta which is starting to fall off a lot frost death knight you're okay not really. You're, you're the same spot as last patch. You're just gimmicky one shot. Pray that it can work. Now, you can make that work, but you can get lobbies where it's difficult to get targets stacked up. If enemies just trade cooldowns, then you become pitifully weak and you, people can kind of run over you. So similar problem to assassination. Just I don't think they hit the mark for Frost Death Knight on this patch, so I'm giving it a little bit of a lower ranking. Frost Mage, this guy is still really nasty, especially with all the melee DPS. I'm throwing you in the A tier along with the other wizards. And I mean, ideal world would be all the specializations are in the a tier they feel really strong have their niche situation can all carry the game based on the you know level skill the player has so this is looking good that there's so many specializations already on to the a tier fury warrior i think this guy's doing a lot better than last patch i feel pretty comfortable kind of throwing this guy up onto the b plus tier getting pretty close maybe to the a tier i think arms is slightly better i think your overall damage is going to be more noticeable um, than that of fury but fury in niche situations where you can tunnel down a target with high survivability against casters might feel better in those scenarios holy paladin for me, Holy Paladin is probably still S tier um, in terms of healer. I don't know if it's necessarily God tier. I think that you can run on top of them, crowd control them, switch to them and kill them. Um, these are kind of the main win conditions against them so far that I have seen. Uh, but even despite the nerfs that went through, I think it's still a really strong healer. Um, Holy Priest. This is one that I think is also strong, but not as strong as Holy Paladin. Probably chucking this one in onto the A tier. Um, bringing a range stun with Chastise is really good for helping out the team. You do a lot of damage now with Holy Fire, um, and you've got really good throughput, good mechanics with jumping into the Spirit of Redeemer to dispel your partners with a lot of dot effects, keep them aggressive and immune crowd control. If you're really good with your fades and death to immune crowd control, you can feel like you can carry a lot of lobbies with those mechanics. Havoc Demon Hunter, I think this is probably coming in onto the A tier as well. Uh, along with Warrior Enhancement and Feral Druid. It's just really well-rounded kit, lots of utility, lots of stuns, crowd control, and really good damage overall. Um, weaknesses, you know, a lot of wizards kiting you around um, with deep dampening, so your off healing's a little bit weaker and reduced, uh, and you can be exposed in those scenarios, and also rogues, just dying and stuns to so rogues and windwalkers, and those guys are really prevalent. Uh, Marksmanship Hunter, I wanna throw you on the B plus uh, overall. 
Um, I, I feel like you're still a spec that kind of gets run down. If there's any disarms in the lobby with skilled players that know how to shut that down and line of sight you, you're not going to be able to get a lot of done. But in like a lower bracket, you're absolutely going to crush new players that don't know to line of sight you or CC you. You're going to absolutely destroy them. So take that with a grain of salt. If somebody just wants to play something have fun at lower rating, it's probably going to be a lot of fun. But if you want to climb the overall ladder, um, I think it's probably better than Beast Mastery. Do we throw this up on A tier? I do think it's better than Beast Mastery. So in this order, it's better than Beast Mastery left to right. Um, but I don't know if I want to throw it up into A tier just yet. Uh, Balance Druid, this guy is still S tier. I still think Balance Druid is S tier. Um, I played it a little bit. I had some 3-3 lobbies and a 6-0 lobby. Um, recently, you can check out my stream linked in the description down below if you'd like to see some live gameplay. Um, but I still think that in the in the hands of a skilled player, it's still a remarkably powerful spec. I still think Cyclone can carry lobbies. Uh, Full Moon is still feeling uh, powerful, and you can switch it out for Fury of a Loon now in situations where it's too difficult to cast. Mistweaver, uh, you know what's funny about Mistweaver is if you get augmentation evokers and you run Fistweaver, I think it's really good. Fistweaving is actually still kind of one of the main reasons I think it's strong. You just completely hard counter dot classes, like good luck beating a Mistweaver that has a Shadow Priest in the lobby. It's just, it's going to be a nightmare beating them as any other healer. Seems to be your niche scenario. I, I want to say that you're probably an A tier, maybe a little bit behind Holy Priest. Um, you are susceptible to crowd control though, and Paladin can run around you and just destroy you with crowd control. So I don't think you're in the A plus or the S tier category. Outlaw Rogue, probably the worst spec in the game. Just low damage, decent control um, out of all the available classes in terms of crowd control, but damage is just not there for you to compete with the other classes, unfortunately. Preservation Evoker, I think this is still probably an S tier healer. Does the highest damage of any healer in the game. Can you know bully paladins by getting on top of them with sleepwalks. Is more susceptible though than other healers to things like Root Solar Beam. Um, and also things like Mage with Polymorph. It can be a little bit weak as well as Rogue. Um, but I think it's still one of the top contending healers along with Holy Paladin. Resto Druid, I think this guy's pretty average. Um, I, I want to put him onto the B plus, although there is, you know, one player on the ladder in an A that's really making it work with Resto Druid. I think uh, your overall experience for the average player is not going to be that great. Uh, I personally almost want to delete my Resto Druid on the healer challenge to get 2,400 on all my healers. It feels entirely team dependent. You can keep your team alive, but you'll run out of mana before every other healer. If you get offensive, you get interrupted one time, it's game over. Um, and the nurse to high winds have affected you as well. So I, I think you're probably the worst healer now in Resto Druid. Retribution Paladin, I think that you're an A-tier melee. I think that you're really solid. You do a lot of damage overall. There are Paladins that can navigate between running in when they don't have their, running away when they don't have their Avenging Wrath, uh, and then push in in wizard lobbies at right moments and save their Divine Shields for their big pushes. Are gonna see success in those lobbies even despite those being weaker for them. And that is the main reason it's not S tier, is I think you can get lobbies that are really difficult, um, but even the difficult ones I think are possible to overcome for the highest skilled player. Uh, Resto Shaman, this is still a remarkably powerful healer. Um, with 5% healing buff and really having fun on this one. Um, and I haven't played Rest of Shaman in like years and I'm almost 2400 on it in less than three days. It's really fun. Tons of fun. You're going to feel like an alien invader shutting down you know, incoming aliens and just totally shutting them down. It's really fun to just wind shear and ground everything and make, know the enemy wizards are, are angry and wizards are really popular. So definitely a contender in terms of the overall healers here for Solo Shuffle. Shadow Priest, I think this is an S tier caster. You still just really tanky and you do the most damage of any caster. Uh, and the master spell for your teammates in the hands of great players is going to really cut you ahead of the other DPS that can't get their partners out of crowd control like that. Subtlety Rogue, I think Subtlety Rogue is still S tier. Um, I, I think that you can hard carry with Shadowy Duel and Smoke Bomb, and you've got a lot of crowd control for a healer that's instant, gouge kidney, and this type of deal for the healer. I think it's still a really strong spec, definitely being slept on if anybody thinks that it's weak in any regard. Survival Hunter, I want to put this on B tier, uh, or B plus, sorry. Uh, I think that, again, survivability are a bit squishier than a lot of the other Hunter specs, but the damage buff may maybe pushes you into a i just think you're one of the easiest easiest exposed melee because you have no real consistent healing and you have real no consistent stuns that can shut damage down or heal it back like basically any other melee so i think you're more fragile in that regard and it's gonna be tougher to climb uh, as a result unholy dk i think this is an s tier melee I think that it's doing a huge amount of damage. It just wins games, raw power, basically. Um, gripping enemies together, blinding them, lots of crowd control shutdowns. If you're focused on interrupts and things like this, you're going to be able to carry a lot of lobbies. I think Unholy DK is absolutely cracked right now. And Windwalker, Monk, the final class to rank here. This guy's coming in on S tier. Uh, I actually think that it's probably better than Subtlety Rogue. I think it's probably the best melee DPS in the game. 
uh, at the moment, especially for so for solo shuffle, like this tier list is intended for. Um, it's it's absolutely crazy how much damage this spec is pulling now um, with the changes to it, and how much more tankier it is with the changes made prior to this point. And this is kind of my assessment uh for this moment in time so as we want to reorganize this like the power of the melee in terms of where they're sitting in the bracket maybe move Rhett a little bit over to the left again it's left to right is the most powerful to the weakest um and then you know from the top to the bottom most powerful to the weakest um i think marksman's probably better than affliction um only by a bit it may be meh. yeah i think that's probably right like augmentation, I'm tempted to put on S tier. I'm honestly still tempted to put it on S tier, but I think wizard lobbies can be tough for you, um, and it can feel out of your control in those situations. But if you get a lot of melee lobbies, you're going to win a lot. Um, but this is this is generally where I where I'm vibing in terms of the specializations, their potencies. Marksman could probably be a little bit higher, um, maybe maybe in the A tier. I don't know. I think that if, if people want to disarm and stun you and, and target you at, in line of sight you when it's casters, I don't think so. I feel pretty safe with this. I, I think this is generally my thoughts where, where the specializations are currently sitting in terms of their power, their potency, and what they can get done. Um, you can see that Mage has got a lot of stock increases, a lot more S tier specializations, a lot of guys sitting on the A tier, a lot of guys getting close to it, and then some guys have just been forgotten and feels forgotten man uh hopefully you guys get some updates in a future build here coming forward other than that thank you very much for watching the video if you enjoyed it make sure to press the subscribe button and comment down below with your thoughts and your experiences as i want this to be as an accurate of a resource as possible for everybody to use for their day-to-day -day gameplay thank you very much and i will see you in the next video